Hi, I'm Jess. And I'm Sean. After meeting through our mutual love of travel, we've committed ourselves to designing a life where we can pursue our careers, yet satisfy our cravings for adventures. In season two, we have set those foundations and we're northbound for Queensland. Follow us on our journey as we live full time in our off-grid caravan. And explore all the gems Australia has to offer. This morning's been a pretty hectic morning. Getting ready to go to Morton Island. Got the back all packed. Got some spare diesel, heap of firewood, swag, all the bedding, kitchen stuff, toilet, emergency water in case my water tank underneath um, fails or whatever reason. Um, yeah, so surfboards on top, max tracks, all the kitchen stuff. But earlier, when I was trying to back the car in to fill up the water, my handbrake snapped. The cable right here snapped. So, I had to do a little uh, bush mechanics and just fix it with some cable ties for the meantime. Um, later today or tomorrow, I'll have to try and fix it properly with like a bolt or something. But yeah, it's not ideal. So here we are, made it in time. Bit of a stressful day. Um, in line for the Morton Island Ferry. So there's three things that you need to get to go to Morton Island. You need to get the ferry ticket, full wheel drive permit, and book all your campsites. And it cost us about 400 for five nights on the island. Including the ferry and the vehicle permit. Yes. Yeah, the whole thing. Whole thing. The campsites are pretty cheap. It's like six bucks, around six bucks a person for a night. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty good. Yeah. Makes just all the other things that add up. Here we go. Exciting. So this is it, this is home for the next two nights in this spot and we'll move on to another spot up the coast a bit more. We're going to christen our snorkeling gear that we got the other day. We got a pro tip from the guy in the dive shop. I have no idea if we're doing it right, but he said toothpaste for five minutes, then wash and then repeat again. Yep. So I don't know what we're going to see, but we'll swim. Yeah, it's not, I'm not really sure that this is a good snorkeling spot, but it's just to test everything before tomorrow and we go to the wreck.
think you have a peaceful campsite. So they're just setting up the toilet, the throne for the missus. One of the little tricks I do though is, for the sink, I capture all the water down here. So this is just gray water. And we use that. So I'll put a little bit in the tank with this green stuff. And then the rest will go in the top to flush. So we're not wasting fresh water to flush the toilet. So just set up the hammock, or the hammocks, both of them, for later today. So we can read our books in the sun, dry off. <laughs> can you even get in there? Yeah. How's that? Perfect. Room for two. It's just us on the beach today. There's no one around. It's lovely. How was that? Um, amazing. I have found my calling. <laughs> Snorkeling? Yeah. Snorkeling that shipwreck. That was unreal and I didn't even do much. I could have stayed out there for ages. Um, <laughs> it was so good. After the wrecks, we decided to explore the southern tip of the island. It's a good hour drive from the middle road to a town called Karingal, which is home to the famous Gutter Bar. 
and you can drop in to pick up some Moreton Bay rock oysters on the way. Since it was low tide, we drove down the protected western track, but even at low tide, it's sometimes inaccessible. This beautiful place is called Sean's Shack. Sean's Shack. Stay on. All right, a quick overview of Morton Island, or Mulgumpin, to the First Nations people. The epicenter is the Tangaluma Resort, which is located close to the ferry, the wrecks, and the middle road, which is the best way from the east to west side, or vice versa. 98% of the island is national park. The rest are composed of three settlements, which are all on the protected western side. Bulba in the north, Kauan in the middle, and Karingal in the south. Campsites are situated all around the island. Most popular sites are the established ones, such as the centrally located Ben Iwa and the Rex Campgrounds, which are family favourites. The shady Combayiro Point Campground is popular for fishers. I like the North Point Campground, which attracts surfers and families too. With large grassy sites, protected novelty aspect, and proximity to Honeymoon Bay, this is our pick for the top campsite. It's worth mentioning that there are dozens of other camp areas dotted along both coasts. These are just cleared areas with no facilities. Be warned that the ones on the eastern side are generally isolated and are at the mercy of the winds and the weather. The beach cops the full force of the Pacific Ocean. So we're on the eastern side now. We're kind of like racing the high tide. Just coming in. And this side of the island is very uh, soft to sand, super soft. Had to drop it into low range a couple of times. And then all the way up this eastern side beach as the tide was getting high, so we kind of had to go fast. You can see some of the Rouse battery um, in the hills, which is the World War II defense structure. There's quite a few of them around. I mean, there's one just there. It's like a big concrete block and more up the beach. Then, after that, we took the middle road back across and then came back to our campground. And just gonna chill in the hammocks and read. This is magical. Living the dream. So one thing about this island is uh, when you walk around the beaches you'll see all these like concrete structures some of them have like tumbled down from the dunes like these guys they're remnants from um, the defense of Morton Bay in World War II <laughs> nice <laughs> big heel hook and she's up and over Nice. Sean. <laughs> Oops. Didn't have one of those on the other side. Getting a bit of a tour for some from some people we met on the boat. Are you going to tell us that you designed this place? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you just go in there, film that. Oh, that. what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll see you in a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Would you like to swap? Do you want the swag for tonight? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs>
on this place is called Yellow Patch because of that yellow patch up on the hill. <gasps> People are surfing! It might be waves! Things you see at the beach, eh? So I got a problem for you. Do you reckon you can get to the top? How good are your grips? It's a bit of an urban climbing revolution here since we don't have any rocks to climb. Let's find buildings. I'm not going to be able to reach. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Pinch. I'm scared. Come on. <laughs> My fingers are slippery from the sunscreen. The pinch is good. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's what I was scared of. <laughs> So just about a K north of the Bulwa shipwreck down there is the Kombayuro campground. And that's where we're staying tonight and the next night. So let's see how it is, eh? But we've got this great little flat spot here. It's uh, a bit different from the last place. Backs onto this sort of ferny, swampy area. There's uh, heaps of bird life, which is nice. So we've got a little campsite here, there's tons around and they're quite spaced out on this uh, narrow strip and the ocean's just beyond that fence. Not as good as the other place because one of the massive perks of being on the island is you get to watch the sunset. Yeah. Which you don't usually on the Australian east coast. So seeing our Sunset last over spot. the water. Yeah. <laughs> Mosquito. And there's lots of mosquitoes here. Yeah, so we're gonna... so much standing water in there. It's just a mosquito pit. So one thing we always do, no matter where we are in Australia, is when we see rubbish, we pick it up. We always have a bin with us. 
pretty um, disheartening sometimes. Like you come to these beautiful spots and there's just bits of rubbish everywhere. You know, toilet paper, people shitting in the bush. Um, so yeah, even like little things, there's little things everywhere. Like just little like ring pulls, plastic stuff. There's always cable tires on the ground, bottle caps, bread tags. Oh, there's a bread tag. So whenever we see a bit of rubbish, we simply just pick it up and put it in a bag. And I reckon we've picked up, yeah, half a bag full of rubbish just mm. in two days here. We've seen lots of other people picking up rubbish as well. Yeah, it's been really inspiring. People just um, beachcombing, literally just walking along the high tide mark, picking up rubbish. And I think that's what makes this place really special. It seems really clean. If everyone can do that little part, then, you know, it makes it more pristine and special for everyone else. Yep, that's a lake. Definitely a lake. Is it worth the 50 metre walk? Um, yeah, not sure about that. So I've been here a minute. We're still trying to figure out what the signs are. No gold panning? <laughs> I think that's cleaning a pot. That's what that is. And I'm going to guess that's soap. Oh. Good guess, I reckon. So we're at the Blue Lagoon right now. It's only a small little beach, so you have to share it with everyone. Beautiful spot, kind of protected from the wind. How would you describe it? Refreshing. Okay. So. Which is code word, code word for freezing. Yeah. Okay, it's refreshing. On there, champ. Oh, it's a bit stressful. I'm managing. First time driving on sand, so she just come off the beach, and now we're on the trails down the south end of the island. Uh, how are you going? That's the <laughs> more important question. Um, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> I think you'll do fine. What's your fact? Fun fact, now Tempest, where we're walking to the summit of right now, is the highest vegetated sand mountain in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> vegetated. Okay. <laughs> Has to be vegetated. He's running! Yay! The knee has recovered enough to jog and keep up with me. Doesn't take much to keep up with you. <laughs> I'll just stop. Well, definitely a panoramic view at 360 degrees.
we accidentally brought our pot plant with us uh, in the car rather than leaving it in the caravan. And how's it um, gone on all these sand dunes and beaches and river crossings on Lawton Island? It's lost half its soil and its pots broken, <laughs> shattered. It's still good. Just needs a spruce up. This has been a pretty rough life for it, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was doing so well. Uh, so I've come for a walk down to Tangaluma Resort to see what it's all about. So Tangaluma has a bit of an interesting history. Uh, it used to be a whaling village. So I think that's what this jetty is. So it's pretty interesting, um, the resort here. They're flying three flags. We've got the Tangaluma flag, the Aussie flag and the state flag. But there's no indigenous flag. It's quite interesting because all the information you get about Morton Island acknowledges how important the indigenous are to this island. And then it's something as simple as putting that flag up gets neglected. So they do quad bike tours as well. This is what five days on an island without showering looks like. Ready? <laughs> Self styles. <laughs> Yours is worse than mine. This looks half decent. <laughs> it can almost like hold itself up. <laughs> <laughs> They're off onto the Mycat. Back to Brizzy. I'm so sad. So we've only shown you a fraction of what this island has to offer. We jam-packed our five days here and couldn't do all the things we wanted to do. Other popular activities include sandboarding down the epic sandblown dunes. Uh, we had to miss the Rouse battery due to rising tides and we couldn't tick off all of the nine walks of varying lengths and difficulties that are on the island. Uh, more surfing, fishing and laying about in the hammock would have been appreciated too. I hope this overview has helped influence your decision to visit Morton Island and I hope I've done it the justice it deserves. It's been a pleasure to make this video. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, whack the like button and give us a subscribe. Uh, feedback and questions help motivate us to continue to showcase these beautiful places Australia has to offer. Cheers! Interesting how... What? Sorry, got distracted by the ship. <laughs> In the middle of talking. <laughs> to the western side of the beach, the south side of the resort.